24 hours sold out Alter Ego Festival. Black Keys, Blink-182, Billie Eilish, who dropped a new song today. Oh, I was yeah, checking I saw to that. I didn't hear it, though. It's pretty good. I was checking to see where Nine Inch Nails was in the uh, leaderboard standings for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame fan vote. And it looks relatively unchanged. Um, Dave Matthews' band is um, away in front. It was Pat Benatar in the top spot for a long, long time. You can vote through the first week of January, I think. Uh, the fan vote for the 2020 um, Hall of Fame class. Uh, the top five, I don't know that anyone has changed other than the Dave Matthews Band leapfrogging Pat Benatar for the top spot. Dave Matthews himself saying publicly uh, that it would be uh, very strange if they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ahead of a lot of these other bands, and I can't say I disagree with them. Dave Matthews Band, Pat Benatar, Doobies, Soundgarden, Judas Priest. Uh, I think have remained the top five unchanged. Uh, Depeche Mode 6, Whitney Houston, Thin Lizzy. Motorhead and Nine Inch Nails are down there. I'm kind of surprised. I know Motorhead... I don't know that you can call them a fan favorite. Um, I've always been a huge fan. I think they absolutely belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And again, this is just the fan vote. Whoever Which counts wins, as one vote. One vote. One ballot. Mm -hmm. And it's a tough class. The MC5 coming in dead last in the, uh, the fan, fan vote. vote. Yeah, but, but 4.1 million votes have been cast in total. But even if Nine Inch Nails doesn't get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Trent Reznor got a CMA award. Who? What? How? That's the Country <laughs> Music Awards. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's strange. Because he was a producer on Old Town Road. Ah, did you know that? I did not know that. That's great, though. I'll tell you what. That's really cool. This Trent Reznor, he's really having a great second act as a composer. He's incredible. They do the Watchmen mm -hmm. score, if you're watching the he's Watchmen. He's done a bunch of movies. Yeah, Social Network, and that might have been the first one of the first ones he did, but his boy did, Atticus Ross. Did he do uh, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo? I think, I think he did, he that. did yes. Yeah. Produced that uh, Karen O version of Immigrant Song, the Led Zeppelin cover. Yeah. So they've been doing this for a while. And apparently he was a producer on the Lil Nas X mega hit with um, Achy Breaky, what's his name? Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy Raymond Cyrus. Miley's dad. William, William Raymond, Raymond Cyrus. Cyrus. That's right. William Esquire. Shart Cyrus Esquire. <laughs> so yeah, Trent Reznor got a Country Music Award. Country Music Association Award. So there you go. And good for him. Because, this is how it works, I guess. He didn't produce the song. I misspoke. But there is a sample of one of his songs in, in the song. Oh, okay. And so Trent Reznor gets a piece of that. Nine Inch Nails had a song called 34 Ghosts. And there's a little, little banjo piece mm -hmm. in that. And they use that sample. In, you know, it's like if, you're, uh, if the team wins the Super Bowl, even the secretary gets a ring. Yeah. Same thing with this. Tell you what, I love that nine-year-old girl. She should be in the rock hall. Before the girl Whitney playing the drums. Houston. Yeah, have you watched any of that? I yet? have. Yeah. So, and what and she, she's just playing, uh, and she just starts screaming. Yeah. and it's great. It's great. You go to alancockshow.com. There is a video there. Nine-year-old drummer rocks out. Her name's Nandy Bushell, and what she lacks in finesse, she makes up for in just in, enjoyment of enthusiasm. playing. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Playing Nirvana in Bloom. And she knows what she's doing yeah. en enough to where this is a British girl, I think. But because um, I was like, okay, well, Nirvana's not hard to play, mm -hmm. and then she's playing um, uh, System of Down. <laughs> I mean, that part's just bashing. But right. then she's playing Kiss by Prince. Yeah. Then she's got good cymbal work, right. so she clearly knows what's going on. She's good. Yeah. So she's Nandy Bichel. On uh, Well, go to alancockshow.com. You can watch it, and then if you want to follow her, you should. I love to see young kids who pick up an instrument. I'm biased because I'm a drummer, but, mm -hmm. I mean, you pick up anything. I, Jesus, did you see about the, the woman with the Miami Symphony, the oboe player? Oh, no. Who died when oh, she oh, fell? No. <laughs> oboe, what happened? Oh, no. <laughs> a woman who was getting ready to play. Janice Thompson. She was a beloved member of the Miami Symphony. 
And I don't know how highly regarded they are. You know, say what you want about Cleveland, but the Cleveland Symphony is world-renowned. They're incredible. Yes. So, um, I assume the Miami Symphony has got its fans, too. This woman is 62. She was going down a flight of stairs minutes before the season opening concert performance. Man. And she fell down the steps and hit her head on the tile floor of the lobby. So she's in the lobby. Ooh. She wasn't like in a stairwell or something. And you figure she's dressed up. She's probably wearing heels. Mm-hmm. One band member said she was in the lobby when she heard a bone-crunching splat. Ow! Oh, bone-crunching splat. A bone-crunching bone crunching splat. Bone-crunching splat. Usually you think of a splat being more of a soft sound, but bone-crunching splat, that is very descriptive. Oh. Either half of that description would be gross enough. Mm-hmm. Like, here's a splat. Or bone-crunching. Right. right. Uh, here is a bone-crunching splat. Yeah. That's what they said it sounded like, I guess. She Whoa. said, we turned around, everybody was screaming, and she was bleeding on the floor. Uh, they took her to the hospital where she died uh, the next day. But Jesus, I mean, you're, you, you certainly, if you're an oboe player, you don't think that's how you're going to go. I mean, first of all, you lived through getting beaten up all through school. Mm-hmm. Only to go out this way. I mean, she's a female, so she probably didn't get beaten up. But How do you go on with the show? I mean, I know they say the show must go on, but, like, my nostrils would be flaring while I'm playing. Like, I don't even know. I, I don't know if they canceled it or not. They well, said it's that one person. I mean, how, how, still does on. anybody even want to watch a show without the lead oboist? Not only that, imagine your second chair oboe. Yeah. I don't know that's if she was not, first chair. That's but not how you want to get promoted no. to first chair. No. You want to earn it. It's like Beverly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your bow and let's go. <laughs> Beverly, grab, grab your, your bow, bow and let's go. It's like, yeah, my, my big break. Oh, yeah. my God. My big break came after Janice's <laughs> last break. Yeah, that's so gross, though. She probably had heels on. You know, you're walking down those marble steps in some grand, whatever the symphony hall is. Ugh. Hey, I got a trip to L.A. for you. There are no oboe players that I'm aware of in any of these bands. Our uh, third annual Alter Ego Festival is going on at the Forum in L.A. And this is going to be on January the 18th. And there's only two chances every weekday for you to win. You get 9 o'clock with Rover, 5 o'clock with me. That's Black Keys, Blink-182, Billy Eilish, Lumineers, and more, okay? Trip, tickets, the whole schmear for you and a pal. So good luck. Hey, it's Rover. Time for your shot at a trip to our iHeartRadio alter ego now. Text the nationwide keyword PARTY to the number 200-200. You'll get a confirmation text and info, standard data and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. That's PARTY to the number 200-200. Good luck from 100.7 WMMS. By the way, people had some thoughts about Pound Cake's mom robbing the cradle. <laughs> Leave my poor mother out of this. <laughs> well, more some thoughts about your reaction to it. I don't care about their what they think. Al, what kind of cut rate private investigator is Poundcake hiring if he gets immediately found out and bought off? I don't know. Alan, uh, I am fifty. My wife is thirty. I went to school with her parents. But that's the double standard he was talking about, where that when a man. Different. Yeah. With it's a really younger different. woman is more common, but a, an older woman with a younger man, that's uh, a little strange. Yes, it, yeah. it's a double standard, and I know it's a double standard, but it is what it is. Hmm. Um, let me go back here. Who else? Um, there's a lot of texts in here. Is there anyone on his side? Yeah, well, what? somebody yeah. said that their mom is dating... Yeah, there were a couple people on his side. There is a uh, in an episode of Flicks and Bill, there is a story about a girl whose mom banged her boyfriend. Mm. But see, so. no, that that's and that's not even on the same topic because we weren't talking about someone banging your boyfriend. Right, I know. There's levels. I'm just saying, like there, that like the age difference was there. Alan, my mom dated someone I went to high school with, and it was really weird. I have to agree with Pound Cake. I'm on sorry, this that's one. weird. The old rabbit from uh, Eight Mile. Well, but the, <laughs> but the weird part about that is that they know the person, not that the age 
Both. If it was well, but mm. it would be less weird if it was a stranger that was twenty six. Right. But if it's somebody you went to high school with, you go, "Oh my god, this guy was stuffing me in a locker." That's what I'm saying. Like, mom, <laughs> or, you're date- now he's stuffing my mom in the back. <laughs> <laughs> mom, you're gonna date Benny? Really, <laughs> Benny, the one that used to pick his nose in class and flick him? Like, well, really? now he's so flicking those books at your mom. That's right. It's better what if Pound Cake's mom wanted to marry a twenty six year old millionaire? No. No, because I no, because I would feel like he once again he would have some impure intentions. But he, but what are his intentions if he's already rich? He's, your mom's not going to make him rich. I, but but rich people don't make you just because you're rich doesn't mean you're a nice person. Like what do you know about he, rich people? He knows a lot. He knows everything about rich people. He knows how they have uh, their orgies. You're the one talking about silence, that's true. All that stuff. Yeah. You're the one talking about your inheritance. Here's somebody who wants to marry your mom. Man, he's going to cut you in. No, my, first of all, my mom can't be bought, and two, not like, bought. I'm just that. saying, if it's a rich person, who, he you happens to be that. rich. Your mom could definitely. <laughs> yeah, you be bought. don't know that. No, I just. Your mom could be bought. No, she can't. But I feel like it, I would feel like you have some impure intentions. Like what? You're just going to use my mom as property. You just want her to make her to make you food every day when you're home, coming home from work. Like what? And she doesn't want? have to work anymore. Oh, that sounds nice. She's worked her whole life for mm-hmm. ungrateful children. <laughs> and now she's going to have a big stinky man. That's gonna not appreciate her. No, he appreciates her. He's happy to be there. Only, to have her there. Only her kids have her, have that right to not appreciate her <laughs> when a... she does something for her for them. So, hmm. All right. The jealousy is what it comes down to. It's not jealousy. I don't understand how I'm the weird one when you're talking about dating someone who's like. 25 and you're a 61 year old woman, and that is like they, these are your peers. I'm just squaring nah, up with I this dude. I just want my mom to be look, happy. Looking, mm-mm, I ain't this dude up. I, like no, at the kitchen table, just supposed to make small talk. So, anyways, don't you remember when we graduated? Like no, <laughs> <laughs> I like how in all these scenarios you lay the guy out. Like your mom yeah, brings all of a your you mom can fight well. Your, yeah, your mom brings home some like twenty six year old <laughs> MMA fighter or something. All of a sudden, you're laying him out. I'll grab like a broom or something, smack him with it. A broom. Something. Get out of here. <laughs> you're not shooing a I'm raccoon. I'm gonna shoo him away. <laughs> You've got a guy. Make him crawl up the chimney. <laughs> who wants to? Yeah, all right. Nah, man. Forget that, Alan. Just stop trying to make it seem like it's not weird. No one said it's not weird. I'm just, just saying. saying that we want your mom to be happy. I don't want and her to be happy. Getting, I don't want her to be happy. She's getting under, under down those. by a 26 year old. It makes her happy. Absolutely here's happy. here's someone who's laying it down right. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. You know he's he's cool with uh, the fact that she has a schedule of a vampire. He's you know? okay that she's a little older. He, he can do the whole Netflix and pills thing. No, I'm not <laughs> even going to go there with you. Absolutely. There you go. He'd come home, he'd say, Tea kettle Taco Bell! <laughs> Dinner's on me! <laughs> right? What's the matter with that? Oh, don't you worry, Teresa. I, I got you one of your good chickens. Is he a millionaire because he owns Taco Bells? Because then that's going to be a conflict of interest. Sure, if that helps you. Ooh. Sure. I, I would really have what to. What if he owns a string of Chick-fil-A's? Ooh. <laughs> oh, your morals are getting a little looser, huh? I'm not. I'm not gonna be selective. Like on, I, I I said it, so I'm gonna go. We don't know if his mom can be bought. He can absolutely. Be oh bought. yeah, we know nah. that. I love my mom more than Chick Fil A. So do no. Do you? Mm-mm. Do you though? No. Do you? Mm-mm. No. Your mom loves you. Chick Fil A. You just want to taste the hate. He, he can still ha- own Chick Fil A's and be a bad person. Alan, my dad's girlfriend is younger than my oldest sibling. It's his business, and he's happy. I don't want him nosing around in my daily dating life, so I'm not getting into his. Ah, uh-uh, but it's different. You got to look after your parents after a certain age because they can be mani- not if you're not if they're uh, significant others. By the way, thirty you, years you, younger. You, than you talk them, about your mother like she's in the throes of dementia. No. If I, it was somebody coming in to take, if it was an Anna Nicole Smith Howard Marshall situation or whatever that guy's name was. But I know how kids my age think. So I'm not about to allow my mom to be taken advantage of by some hot young. I think it's cute that you still but, refer to yourself as a kid and you're 27. I am a kid. You're a grown ass man. I'm a kid. Yeah, right. And I'm not going to allow my mommy to be thrown. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, listen. Tomorrow night, right? I'm going to see the King Diamond show. I'm so excited. He is 63. His wife, who I think is a background singer for the band, she's 34. There you go. They just had a kid. Because she ain't 63. He is. 
Things can be done. Nope. It's different. Alan, my husband and I are celebrating our first anniversary today, and we're 17 years apart. He is a man. I'm imagining he's older than him. All than right. Her. By the way, they added to that King Diamond show, Bone Crunching Splat is opening up oh, nice. tomorrow night. Men are pigs. Miami is a second home for the Cleveland Orchestra. Is that true? Oh, I did not know that. What does that mean, a second home? Uh, they, perf- they, they have perform a residency there a lot? There? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. And, uh, that's why that club down there is called the Clevelander. Oh, <laughs> they play there they, all maybe. The time. Yeah. yeah, I've eaten there. I've never been there. I the Cleveland, we, it's right on the ocean. I, I know. I wish we could have gone when we had that layover, but it would have been too much work. Mm-hmm. Alan, I had a my, man five years older than me ask for my permission to date my mom. Now she's dating. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, what? I'm just going to read this as written. I had a man five years older mm-hmm. than me ask for my permission mm-hmm. to date my mom. Mm-hmm. Now she's dating my dead half sister's husband. I feel like we've talked to that person before. Whoa. Sounds familiar. That sounds like They're too convoluted. Much to I was going to say yeah. that's levels of messy. Yeah. My grandma married my mom's ex. Oh hell no! <laughs> oh, see, then now I have to talk about biting uh, my mom. <laughs> like, she do something like that, we gonna have to square up. Right. I know I don't want him, but you can't have him either. (laughs) Mom. (laughs) Alan, it's 2019. Just sounds like Pound Cake's mom wanted to see what all this eating ass is about, so she (laughs) got herself a youngin. (laughs) Maybe. You people are disgusting. She's a medical professional. She's familiar with... Disgusting. She's... Familiar with all that. That's why I don't want no big stinky man. Oh, come on. Big stinky man. What do you care? Great ass. All right, I've got a break, okay? Uh, Cavs game early tonight. So your pregame is set to start around 530. And then 6 o'clock, it's going to be Cavs heat down at the Romo Fijo. You want to get the last word in, do it here. 35192 to text. It's Steelers week. Here we go, Brownies. Touch a double behind. Here we go. Let's go. 100.7 W.